All right, when we last left off, we had Peter Parker meeting Gwen Stacy, introduced at St. Ark University. We also have the interview going along. It is Uncle Ben with This Universe's Victoria. What's nice is that he's doing the reporter thing right out the gate. So the first question is the building. And if you remember, there's the sinister rumors going on. So she says, yes, our new central headquarters. And he says, some would say this building serves a double purpose. And she cuts in saying no need to mince meanings. The conspiracists put forward that sinister experience are carried out on secret levels in this building. I find the notion amusing. And of course, it's that interesting because you remember that Ben has been having communication with someone named Charlotte that he's been saying he's going to come and rescue. But he's been keeping that little that little part of the story quiet and to himself. So she's basically dodging questions and says we've been targeted by the media and Brand is some kind of monster. And now we have Pete in class. They're talking about the event Cataclysmic, a release of energy, an extinction level event. They're talking about the vacuums, which is the volumetric air cleaning updraft utility mill or the vacuums, right? Very funny. They're up in the sky, taking in the bad air, pushing out the good air through their filter. So he's explaining that the Earth has a negative reverse magnetic field and the gravity can be reversed. Molecular bonding and adhesion parity is the effective result. So this is really talking about how things are sticking to things and also how they've been able to manipulate the Earth's gravitational field and escape Earth's gravity and make things that hover, these giant constructs. And you're going to see that as we start to have more things show up, more devices and equipment that can go up against Earth's gravity and do very cool things. In a little funny plug, the teacher asks uh, Peter to explain what the MCU is. How do we calculate and get to it? You know, Marvel Cinematic Universe, we're having fun. And he says, you know, you'd need to divide the mass ratio to work against the Earth's gravity and sum the remainders. And the final value gives you the MCU. You know, thank you. Like he's got the answer. Feeling pretty confident. And I like this part. Mr. Parker, that's just brilliantly wrong. And the teacher basically tells him, what's the problem with that calculation? And he says there's no regard to the heat dispersion, which obviously is Peter Parker strapping the air conditionings to the back of his car. There's a huge amount of heat generated when you do that. How do you account for the heat? And Harry gets a little ribbon on uh, Peter. And we have a little moment where the school is kind of thinking it's funny that, you know, he's getting cracked on, you know. Pete's a bit of a goof in this universe. I like these little moments where in the background, Pete's covering his face in shame, and Elliot's just like, oh, man, with his hand up on his head. I like stuff like that. But, uh, okay, Gwen, ever supportive, says, you know, don't worry, Pete, you can always fly the windows, fly with the windows down. You know, always supporting, which is also funny for coming up, coming up later. But, uh, yeah, so now uh, Elliot sees Mary Jane, and the Mary Jane Watson character walks in on a communications scholarship. So she's from Reina Heights. Reina is queen in Spanish. So, you know, basically Peter Parker is from Queens, but this futuristic. So she says, talk about rags to riches. I love when the dialogue translates over. So he so Gwen kind of cracks a little snide remark saying, you know, talk about rags to riches, you know, coming from a regular part of the city, entering their, you know, quote unquote, prestigious school for the technically gifted. And he says, your corporate rise, a rags to riches story. With monies tied to the might, which is another organization, military, industrial, greater, heavy technologies. And she says, yeah, go ahead. Ask me about that. And he says, you know, don't you see a conflict of interest? And what this is really bearing in is that we have the three entities that are driving the story. Right. There's the mayor who you remember before, which is having the affair. He is concerned with his own political power, which will be considered the local government. Then it's her corporate interest you know, becoming this mega powerful corporation. And then also we have the this military force called the Might, which really sits outside of the cities and everyone believes is sort of keeping them safe. And that's this, this force that kind of operates right beyond the walls and basically has the city thinking like, we're the ones taking care of that. You just use your militarized police to protect the citizens, but we're doing the bigger amount of protection beyond the walls. And there'll be more about that later. 
So here's Pete with his friends in university. And this is cute. A phosphorus element is what made it work. You're not really, I don't expect you to catch this, but he's been talking about glowing stuff and he's been having the same conversation that he always reverts back to. And if you string them together, he's actually talking about something very specific coming up uh, in a little bit, a little while. So I'm already laying some of the groundwork for that. So she wants to get an ice cream cone from Pete. You find out that Pete is can barely uh, afford an ice cream cone. Here's another interesting point that because the sky is basically artificial, they can control exactly when it's going to rain. They can tell you ahead of time when it's going to rain and how intense is the rain going to be. So she basically says, hey, even though it's raining, you don't get over. You know, I, you still, you know, owe me uh, an ice cream cone after uh, class. So, you know, he's basically thinking about that. Ben calls him again. He's basically ducking Ben. And now we see that in real time, Ben is doing the interview desperately trying to reach Pete. Because, you know, he wants to clue him in on what's going on. But either so, he contacts Charlotte, which we now find out is this radio. I'm not going to say. Uh, we'll just say radio personality that he's talking to. And which he believes is a child in danger and they're doing some sort of sinister experiment in here and he's got to look into it. So he basically came in here to sort of free her and that's the mission he's on to uncover what's going on. And he ends up finding the secret lab after all. So he finds the block. She says she's there in a large black box and it should read one of 25. So whatever they're doing, there's several versions of it going on. He comes out and he's going to obviously head down the hallway and let's see where his fate leads him. Uh, this is them in school ending. We have a little bit of a joke. I'll let you read that on your own. But you're seeing the same relationship of Flash and Peter, you know, somewhat the school, the school bully, but a little bit less than like full on tilt. But really just, you know, very little respect for Peter. Peter gets in his jab. You sort of establish that relationship. And then Harry comes over. I like this too. Flash can't help being a jerk. Speaking of flashy jerks, <laughs> you're clever. So, you know, we have here that, you know, Pete uh, Osborne, Harry's dad wants to look at Peter's stuff. And already there's rumors or at least something going on behind his character that they're wary. So Gwen says, don't do it. You know, abnormal Norman Osborne will steal your ideas. So already there's an amount of distrust for his dad and his own cooperation. If you know that, you know, Harry and where all this is going to go, you can tell we're already heading strong in that direction. But, you know, his friends concerned with Pete's well-being are saying surely have some guarantees that Peter gets full credit for his work. Basically, you know, Pete wants to be the head and given credit for what he can accomplish and what he can do. And he goes, maybe your dad can help solve the insulation issues. Tell him I need an, a 1-8 uh, TB isolator coupling. And, I, and so here you have that. You could tell now that Pete is getting some of the parts, and he's also sharing some of his innovations, which his dad is interested in, namely the hover lift on his car. Obviously, the dad is interested in something to do with beating Earth's gravity and making stuff that hovers. So that's such a subplot I'm already weaving in throughout the story. Oh, can't go further than that. That's for the next week. So I think that was the end of this chapter. Um, we did a lot of groundwork in this, as, of course, the early books are going to. Because unlike 4-6, which dives right into the action, I let you figure it out as you're going along. This one is going to be a bit more like a foundation building for the story where I'm going to fill in all the blocks first and then let you move the pieces around later and enjoy the story but the framework is there 4-6 doesn't really operate like that it moves at a much uh, different different style and pace so this is the IP expansion of the Spider-Man character from Marvel Entertainment this is my own take on it which is basically a kind of a cyberpunk version of Spider-Man called the Dynamic Spider-Man Plus Illustrated story, everything by me. I'm Drew Spence. Uh, my other titles are Killer Butterfly. They're all mature. So this is really um, my lightest title. So if you're into this and you like to stay in this universe, I would suggest you stick with this title. Uh, the other ones are mature, built and written for uh, an older audience. And I hope you enjoy my work. 
you should hit the like button and subscribe and support. Let me know what's going on. I don't think you can see the comments on any of the Webtoon sites. So if you guys are commenting or sending messages, it's likely that I probably won't see them. I can always try to scroll down and see if they're there. But drop me a note. Let me know what you think. Uh, the eight books are done. We're just going to be sharing them every week. I update on Thursdays or Fridays. I try to make a little explainer video for those that are watching it. And maybe, you know, you want to stay pretty much rooted in the story or you're not going to read it as uh, intensely because there's a lot going on in the book. Lots of little things I've buried in it. Even here, my establishing shot, when they come out from the school, you can see that we have buried in the scene the Mary Jane Watson character. You can see Pete's car here. So, yeah, it's going to go some places. This is the end of Chapter 7 from Issue 2, the Dynamic Spider-Man Plus. I will see you guys next week.